Hello, I'm Carl Seibert. Thanks for joining me. In this video, we're going to apply metadata to some pictures in On One Photo Raw. Nowadays, it's more important than ever that we mark up our photos with good metadata. Right here, we're looking at a preview page from Google Images, and check this out. Google Images is displaying, right here on the preview page, the photographer who shot this picture and the owner of the copyright for this photo. That's pretty cool. Now, Google Images can only do that, of course, if we put the information in the photos. And Google Images will only get that information if a website, like our own website or whose ever website published a photo, preserves that metadata information. And the good news here is that in the last year or so, millions of websites, web hosting companies, and web services that cater to photographers have added or improved their support for metadata. And this is great news for photographers, for honest users of the internet, basically for everybody in society. But for it to work, we have to get that information onto our photos. And as I said, websites have to honor that information. More and more of them are. And on top of all that, Google Images has announced a new feature it's in beta, not yet active, but it's going to allow you to put a badge on your Google Images returns that says licensable. And that badge will provide a direct way for people to get in touch with you to buy a license if they want to reuse your photo. That's pretty cool too. So let's jump over into On One Raw and we'll put some metadata on some photos. We've got a folder full of demo images here. It looks like we went to the garden to shoot them. So let's go ahead and mark them up. The first step is that we need to apply our standing boilerplate data to our whole group of pictures here. Now, this is data that doesn't change. It's the same for every picture that we make. Our name, our contact information, stuff like this. It's really important to do this consistently with a template. You honestly don't want to type this stuff over and over again tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of times into every picture you make. That would just be crazy. It also wouldn't work. Nobody can type their name 10,000 times in a row without making a typo. Heaven knows, least of all me. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiple select all these pictures in this folder. We're going to go over in our metadata pane, and we have the IPTC tab selected, and we're going to go to the presets, presets, templates. Same thing. And we're going to go down and we're going to pull up the Joe Photographer template. Now, this is a starter template, and this template, or one very similar to it, is available always on my blog as a download. It's going to be available to you as a download here in the description below. And it's a starting point. It shows you which fields you probably need to use and a pretty decent format. And you can just go through this thing and change Joe Photographer's name and information to your name and information, and save it as a preset, and there you go. You'll have a template. Let's take a look at what we've got here. We have Joe Photographer's inline byline already typed in to the bottom of our caption field. That's going to save us a lot of typing, and in my case, a lot of potential typos. We have Joe Photographer's name in the creator field. Okay, fine, good. That's pretty obvious. We have Joe Photographer's contact information here. Now, in the template, or in the starter template, Joe has included his physical address, his phone number, his email address, and his website address. You might not want to include all of those contact information elements. I know I don't. I don't include my physical address, and I don't usually include my email address. My templates, I usually have just my business phone number and my website address but that's completely up to you. As we move down the fields here in On One Raw, and at this point, I suppose, I'll take a second to tell you that On One Raw does a very good job of writing metadata. It writes very high quality, standards compliant metadata to your photos. And that's a good thing because that means that any standards compliant software that encounters these photos down the line will be able to read this metadata correctly. So, okay, where were we? We can see here in this set of fields that describe the location of a particular photo that Joe 
apparently shoots most of the time in Florida, in the United States. And he's gone ahead and he's pre-filled those fields. Save a few keystrokes. Okay, that's a good thing. Now, down in this stanza, we have some copyright information. We have Joe's copyright notice. And if you notice here, you can see in the tooltip that popped up, Joe has included in his copyright notice a little bit of contact information. And if you remember back when we were looking at that Google Images preview page, it showed his copyright notice. Now, yeah, you could use Google or whatever, and you could probably find your way to Joe Photographer's website if you wanted to get a license to that photo. But why make it hard for people? My advice is put a little bit of contact information right in your copyright notice. And by the way, there is no legal requirement for any particular form or format for copyright notices. There hasn't been since 1989. Joe Photographer has also filled in the rights usage terms, IPTC field, all rights reserved. Contact Joe if you want a license. It's pretty obvious. I kind of like this field, but I've got to warn you that not all software supports it. So it's a bit optional. And down here at the very bottom, there is a URL that goes with the copyright. IPTC calls this field the Web Statement of Rights. And it's significant for us because that Google Image Licensable Badge that I told you about is triggered by this field. If you put a complete valid URL, and Joe here actually needs to fix this one up a little bit, because a complete and valid URL, as far as Google is concerned, contains the HTTPS colon slash slash and all of that business. If you put a URL in this field, it will trigger the badge and Google will provide a link to that URL. And we'll take a look here. In my own case, I just made this landing page on my website called Licenses. And it says, all rights reserved. Want to publish one of my photos? Get in touch. We'll work it out. It's got a link to my contact page on my website, and it has my phone number. And a little explanatory text thanking people from the bottom of my heart for being honest and for being interested in my pictures. And there's also a sentence in here. Some of a very few of my photos are licensed to Creative Commons. And I have another landing page just about like this for Creative Commons pictures. And if you're familiar with Creative Commons, you have to provide a link to download the original photo. And that is on that landing page as well. Pop back over here and we can see in the creator field, Joe Photographer's name. That's one of the fields that Google reads for Google Images. The copyright field is here. Google reads that one as well. There is a third field that Google reads that you may or may not even need to worry about. It's this one, the credit line field. It's blank in this starter template. For most photographers, it can be blank. The credit line is kind of a tricky concept, but it's the organization that's responsible for the photo or distributed the photo, or to put it another way, it's who you're working for. The easiest way to think about what the credit line should be, if you think about a photographer's byline that you might see on the web, on a news site or something, It'll say something like Joe Radel slash Getty Images. Well, Joe Radel is the creator field. Getty Images is the credit field. It's as simple as that. If you're working for the Widget Co. company and you're making pictures of their products and they're going to distribute those products, your credit will probably be Widget Co. And many clients will specify that you use the credit field in a certain way. But most of us don't even have to worry about that. Now, the way On One Raw works is if you multi select pictures and you put anything in your metadata, it will automatically apply that metadata to all those pictures. Here, we'll just click off and we'll click on some of these pictures and we can see that we've applied our template to all the pictures. So, as far as that Google goodness is concerned, we're already done. That's it. But we want to go another step. Because it's very important to know what's in a photo. Photos have value in many cases because they're specific. They depict something. So we need to note down what it is that they depict. That's important for society. A hundred years from now, if somebody looks at one of these pictures of one of these flowers, it's more important for us right now. Because if we file these photos in a digital asset management system, and on one photo raw, by the way, has a pretty good digital asset management system built in, 
we need to be able to find them. And early on, we can just go through the folders or whatever. But this flower is a hibiscus of some sort. When we have hundreds of thousands of flower photos, we're going to need something better. We're going to need to be able to find this photo by searching for a hibiscus or an orange flower or whatever. So let's make a second step and let's go back and let's add specific caption information to our specific photos. Now our orange flower here exists twice. On one photo raw is a non-destructive raw editor, which means that it doesn't change your original file. It saves whatever edits you make to your original file in a separate sidecar file. And then you can export the file and you can create a new file that has all of those changes baked in. As a workflow choice, and I kind of recommend this, after I've edited a photo and I'm reasonably satisfied with it in On One, I go ahead and I export a JPEG version of that photo. And that helps in a number of ways. For one thing, if I want to share the photo or use the photo, the JPEG is probably what I want to use and it's already there. For another thing, the JPEG gives me a record frozen in time of my edit of the photo. If I go back and I re-edit the photo and I kind of mess it up, I can always work my way back with the JPEG. And JPEG is an embeddable file format. I can put my metadata directly in the header of the file. It's not going to get lost. It's going to be there. It's going to travel with the photo, which is the point about the web and all this business about Google Images. And it's going to be in the photo in my files in perpetuity. So we have this photo and we have an exact twin of this photo or an almost exact twin. I think the color space is different. We can caption these photos together. So in On One Raw, if we multi-select and we do something in the metadata, it's applied to both photos. So I've multi-selected these photos and we'll just put a brief caption on the photo. And this is an orange double hibiscus, or so I am told. And let's see if we can type that correctly. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Yeah, well, we've actually made two typos in three words. That's, uh, even for me, that's an accomplishment. Okay, so there we go. Captions, by the way, good captions. I always advise people to write as they would normally speak or write. And captions should probably have a couple of sentences. They should probably tell you what's in the picture, what's going on in the picture, and some little bit of context about the picture. And by doing it this way, it helps later when you or someone else goes to search for this picture. If your caption was written in a normal conversational or a normal writing sort of style, it's more likely that whatever search terms you think of to look for the picture will match what's in the caption. And maybe we can add some keywords to the picture. Ah, we have a confirmation dialog. Do I really want to write this to both pictures? Yes, I do. Keywords are great for search terms that might not necessarily be in your caption. Keywords can be used for different things. But in general, I say that it's like aviation, where they say takeoffs are optional, landings are mandatory. I say the captions are mandatory, keywords are optional. You actually can live a long and happy life without using keywords. But I use them. I think they're a great idea. And the main use for keywords is they allow you to put in search terms that aren't in your caption. Could be synonyms, could be things that were awkward, whatever. For the sake of example here, I didn't say that this was a flower. So I'll start typing in the add keyword field, flower, and a list of matching keywords that exist in my collection will pop up. I'll go ahead and choose flowers. And this is a really good idea because keywords should be consistent. And this is going to protect me from my horrible tendency to make typos, hopefully. And a hibiscus is a plant. We'll add plants too. And we'll do the same thing. I'll start to type the keyword. I'll select it from the list so the typing is consistent. Confirm it. And on one is going to add the keywords flowers, a comma, and a space, which is the industry standard way of delimiting keywords, right there. And it's done it for both photos. We'll move on and we'll caption one more photo for the sake of illustration. And this photo, let's see, what is this? This is rainwater 
collects in a bromeliad. And we'll add a little context, the pool of water in the center of a bromeliad is called the tank or cup. Well, there we have a little bromeliad lore free of charge with this video. Okay, fine. So on one has now associated that metadata with these photos. That's cool, but we need to know something about how one, how on one behaves with metadata before we go on. On one is a non-destructive raw editor. So on one doesn't write anything to your raw files by default. In the case of these two files, these are camera raw files. So that's not really an issue. Camera raw files are not embeddable, or in some cases, technically, you can embed to them, but you really shouldn't, and on one doesn't. The metadata for a file like this will travel in an XMP sidecar file that's associated with this file. This has a matching file name. So in this case, on one instantly wrote that XMP file as soon as I wrote that metadata. And if I correct the metadata or update the metadata, it'll update that file instantly as we go along. This file here, this is the JPEG file that I had previously exported of this photo. As far as on one knows, this could be a JPEG file that came straight from a camera. And on one, by default, won't write to an original file. We're going to have to tell it that it's okay. So we'll go here to the main menu. We'll choose photo. We'll pull down to embed metadata. And we'll okay the confirmation dialog. And now on one raw is going to write that metadata directly into the header of my JPEG file, which is what I want in this case. And as I said, the raw files where it's an XMP sidecar file, it already wrote the sidecar instantly. That's the way it works. If you're familiar with Lightroom, Lightroom doesn't write metadata to your files at all, embedded or sidecar, until you go to the menu and you pull it down and you tell it to write the metadata. There's no right or wrong about that. It's just the way that two different developers approach the same problem. Now, our bromeliad photo here is a RAW file. It's a Fujifilm RAF file, and we've added metadata to it. What happens if we export that file? Well, what happens if we export that file, I'll just go right ahead and do it here, is that our metadata from our parent file will inherit to the child file in the export process automatically. So we don't have to worry with that. If you caption your photos in On1 RAW when they're RAWs and you subsequently export them, no worries, your metadata will be written into the exported files automatically. Now, my laptop is not the fastest rabbit in the herd here, but our exported file has appeared, and we can see here that it has inherited its metadata from the original file. And that's pretty much the basics of it. This video isn't intended to be a comprehensive how-to about working with metadata in on one raw. There is a lot more nuance, but what we've done here is enough to get you going. You can be marking up your pictures, and you can be reaping the benefits. Before we go, I want to show you one other feature. If you want to, if you want to apply your metadata to all of your pictures, you can reduce the effort from multi-select and pull down the preset, which takes what, a second or two for a bunch of pictures, whether it's two pictures or 200 pictures. If you want to reduce that effort down to zero, On One has a feature called Import from Device. Now, import's a little bit of a misnomer. In Lightroom or Capture One, you have to import your photos into the database, the central database of those programs, before you can do anything. That central database is where all of your edits are stored. It's a big selling point of On One Photo Raw that it doesn't depend on that central database. It uses those sidecar files instead, which I think is a whole lot better. This import dialog is more analogous to the ingest dialog in Photo Mechanic. All it really does 
is it copies images from your camera card to a working folder on your computer. And in that process, you can do stuff. You can apply presets. For example, you could apply editing presets, like turning all your photos to black and white, if you want to work in black and white. But for us, we can add metadata presets as well. In this dialog, you can choose a preset, and when you import your photos, that metadata will be applied to every single photo. So essentially, if you want to go that way, if you want to apply your boilerplate metadata to every photo, you can do it with no work whatsoever. So there you have it. I'm going to make more of these videos with different software as time allows. And on this channel and on my blog, there are a lot more videos and there are a lot of blog posts about the specifics of working with metadata in various pieces of software. And for some software, I have a lot of material and we drill very deeply into the capabilities of the software. I haven't covered on one for that long. Actually, I use on one raw myself. So I believe this is the only on one video that I have at the moment. But going forward, I'll try to make some more. In the interim, if you have any questions about working with metadata in on one raw, please feel free to reach out. You can reach out in the comments down below. You can reach out through the contact page on my blog or through social media. Until next time, please be careful out there, take care of yourselves, and mind your metadata.